All right, in this tutorial, I'm going to try and give you an overview of Blender, kind of the big picture and how you take advantage of it, whether you want to use the game engine, which is really powerful because it has bullet physics built into it, or Blender Render, or Cycles Render. Well, so the one thing to note is even when you switch states between these three things, they also share things amongst each other. So it's not an exact state switching kind of thing that's going on here. All right, so that's important to know. But the first thing that might be obvious is if when you start up Blender Render, or Blender in the first place, it's in Blender Render mode. And the one thing you can verify this, you can come up here to this Render tab here, and you can see that you have the ability to set your frames for rendering an animation or an image. Like if you wanted to render frame 250, you'd put the start frame and the end frame at 250 and hit the animation button. If you did hit only the render button, it's not going to send it to a file. And then down here you actually set the file type you want, PNG, one of these other types, or if you want to set a movie, AVI JPEG like this. All right, so we're looking at that, but now if I go over to the game engine, just keep an eye on these menus in here. See, in the game engine, that ability to render an image or an animation goes away because the game engine is designed for a real-time environment. So it's just there's no need to be rendering in it and that's the lighting that I have it set up in here is designed for real time so I'm using a lot of these kind of lights here like this if I look at the, my lights here that's a point light point light I got a point light and things so I tend to I tend to paint with my lights in a scene when I start really working in the scene but I'm not really thinking about doing a final render in in uh, before cycles render came out I would think about doing a final render using the internal render which is part of blender render and then when cycles renders came out then then you have to start thinking about how you're gonna change your scene like for instance one of the best ways I think you can work is you, there I have that light selected and I don't have much going on in the scene everything's in this first layer here so I would say come into here I would select all these lights like this and I'm going to move them all. I'm going to move them all down into this 11th layer like this. And then to pick this layer up at the same time, I have to hold the shift key and then get it. So now my scene's working without like that. And the reason for doing that is if I want to render this view like this here, I can do Control, Alt, and then 0 on the numpad. That kind of generally gives my view. I'm going to press N to give me my properties window. Where is that thing? Oh yeah, lock the camera to the view. When I do that, I, when I'm moving my wheel mouse, I'm actually changing the position of the camera, so it's changing my view. And then when I unclick it, then it's it's stuck there at that view. So now, what if I press F12 to render, it's going to render that view. All right, the same thing you see in here. All right, it might look confusing because I have those lights up there, but it does render that view. All right, but that renders it using the internal renderer within Blender. And Cycles is really powerful. I actually don't mind using the Blender render because of the kind of work I do for kids as well. And But, however, if I'm trying to do glass, reflections, mirrors, tr transparency, all that, like that, Blender render was pretty cool, but relative to Cycles, you know, Cycles just runs circles around it. So what I'll typically do is I'll build, say this, I'll, I'll click say I'll go into layer 12 I'll just make it active also I'll hold down the shift key and make layer 12 active so since that's the last layer that I've just made active anything I put in the scene now is actually going to go into layer 12 so that's what I'll do I'll come up here I'm going to add a plane to the scene I'm just going to press S15 that just automatically scales it like that and this plane I'm just going to use as, an, as a light I've shown how to set lights in cycles before but this is just for a quick test so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the Material tab. I'm going to press New. But you see, it, it just brings up the regular Material tab that you'd normally see within Blender Render. But in order to set it a light within Cycles, I have to go into Cycles, Render Mode. And then, here's actually, this thing's shifted down out of the way, so I scroll it back up. And now, I can say Use Nodes. And that's what I want to do. I want to use the nodes and in here where it says diffuse, I want to come up here and get an emission, which is essentially a light. All right. So I've set I've set a light in here and let's see what it looks like. With cycles render set, then when I now have there's one other 
option that shows up and that's this material button like this. That's kind of the equivalent of solid when you're working in Blender render mode. All right? But if I want to use the cycles render, I just click this and it's just going to automatically render it using cycles. So it's a whole different kind of rendering. It's just it's just constantly rendering it. When I'm moving it, it's constantly updating it. And you can see that right up here on the screen with these numbers. And if you don't want it to take so long, I've showed before, you can either open up a separate window that has a material tab also, so it doesn't render all the time. And the other way you do it is you, you come over here to the render button and you come down here to sampling and you change it. Here's this preview that says 10. That's the number of times right up here it says 10 out of 10 samples. That's how many times it's doing that render. And I'll just crank it up to say 50 and you'll see what I mean. As I'm doing it, the, the numbers are changing and it's, it's just giving you an incrementally better render as time evolves. If you just want it to go, if you just don't want it to take so long, you just set it to 5 like this and then when I move the scene see it just it's done and it's done just like that but you can see all the graininess left over and this is where you change your final render on here like this but now let's get back to the light so I'm using this light that I created in here using the nodes and it's showing in the scene but so what I'll do is I'll switch between scenes so sometimes I'll just take that layer off and it's trying to render now. Well, it is rendering with the lights from my other setting, but then I could actually just switch it so it doesn't do that. I'll just change it to, well, I'll just, I mean, I'll just change it to Blender Render Mode. And then in here, if I'm in Material Mode, now it's rendering using the internal renderer like that. See, if I change it here to Cycles Render, you'll see the difference in the rendering, right? That line, you don't see that line, like in Blender Render, see that line in there? Right, you don't see that in the Cycles Render, right? But in this case, Cycles is using the light. So if I'm in Cycles Render, I'll turn those lights off and I'll turn the Cycles light on like that. But so what I'd recommend you doing is just putting all the lights that you want for your final rendering in one or two layers and your lights for blender render in another two layers in case you want to work back and forth between the two and you might go well why do I want to work back and forth between the two well that's because in some cases say for instance if when I'm working in the game engine and I'm usually in texture mode using a different kind of lighting in texture mode meaning that I have to come down here and I have to make sure my GLSL is set if I want to have nice texture lights when I flip that light back on and flip that light back off. If I don't have GLSL set, it comes up to multi-texture, then you can see what happens. So you have to have that texture mode and GLSL set at the same time. But the reason why you would want to use two different sets of lights is because maybe when I'm working in some of my game or tutorial environments and I want to have a real-time environment within the game, I'm going to use these kind of lights. But maybe if at the end of the day I want to make a really nice rendering for say the cover of a product like they always do then maybe this was a glass or transparency in blender render or the game and it's not going to look so great but if you put it into cycles then you can render much nicer effects glass and transparency tr translucency things like that so having different layers for lights is really important and another thing is even you can create animations in here and you can take them and you can actually record the animations. So basically what happens is the physics that occurs within the game engine can be recorded as an animation and then when you work essentially in Blender Render and you're using the timeline down here, what it does, it just lays out a whole slew of keyframes. So then you're using it in there, you basically record the physics in the game engine and then you can work within the regular Blender Render or Cycles Render to generate your an animated sequence that way because you can't do the animated sequence within the game engine unless you record the frames and then the last thing to point out is that this when you're in the game engine you're using the bullet physics library for the physics and it's powerful and a lot of fun and you can access it with Python but when you go into blender render there also now has bullet physics as a version 2.66 and when you come over here to the tool shelf you come down here you see you have rigid body tools and these you know make cool animations as well these rigid bodies but it's not the same as 
the game engine. And in fact, even the programming is not the same. There's two distinct libraries that I have to program in when I'm working within Blender. When I'm working in here with the rigid bodies and the lights and the models and things like that, I'm using the Blender Python library, which is called BPY. But when I'm over in the game engine, I have a whole different set of commands that I have to use to access the objects and create animations and rigid bodies and physics effects. And that's the Blender Game Engine library. That's BGE. So there's BGE Python in the Game Engine, and BPY Python in Blender Render. And I still find I still like it because I find it to be it gives me a great deal of flexibility in the types of things that I want to do. So, but maybe at the outset, if you're a new user, it can seem a little, yeah, a little well, you know, daunting. Huh? Okay. All right. Well, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next video.